What's up, love of my life? Los Angeles! Woohoo! Hi, everybody! Hey, didn't see you there. Oh, hey! Oh, hi! Penny Loafers! My name's Molly Stockdale, and I'm one of the original Penny Loafers. 30 years ago, I was hanging out with my good friend Rachel, and we love to sing together. We thought, wouldn't it be fun to have an acapella group? We actually thought, wouldn't it be fun to be in an acapella group? We didn't really know how much work it was going to be to start an acapella group. But we did love to sing together. Um, so we made it happen. We made it happen with the help from a lot of friends. And as the Penny Loafers, the loaf, I guess I have to call you, um, has continued over the years, I know it's been the same way. From the moment I saw the Penny Loafers perform at Freshman Performing Arts Night, I knew that was a group that I wanted to join. Penny Loafers the whole time really stood out to me. Um, these people seemed very close and very comfortable with each other. After every audition, I would call my parents and tell them how it went. And every time after I left the Penny Loafer room, I would call them and say, I think I found my people. I started to do the rounds of auditions and I didn't really feel like I was clicking with any of the groups. And then I got into the loaf room and it was like, yes, I get these people. I uh, auditioned for all the co-ed groups because, duh, I'm not going to be in an all-girl group. I found that they all seemed you know, very friendly and I especially wanted to meet one of the upperclassmen um, who, at the sake of embarrassing her, was Janina Hilo. And so um, one of my other buddies knew a girl in the group, um, Beth Levin. And Beth, I said to Beth, uh, you know, I really want to meet your friend. How do I do that? And she said, well, why don't you come audition? Because the president of the group um, meets every new person and they walk them in. And so you get kind of 15 seconds to make your best pitch. They performed at Convocation and they sang Wonder by Natalie Merchant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they say I'm a Yeah. I am at, I remember going to audition for loafers and being so nervous and hoping that these people liked me. I remember auditioning with Jeff Liebert. Um, he and I were both auditioning for the group at the same time and finishing the the audition, leaving the room and hearing the group burst into laughter. I thought I was doomed from the beginning, but I guess they were just relieved to have somebody who could approximate a tenor. So on a lark, I prepared um, Under the Bridge by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So I auditioned with I Dreamed a Dream from Les Mis. Great. I tried it with the Dixie Chick song, and they still let me in. No, I sang um, uh, Big Yellow Taxi. No, you did it. I swear to God. <laughs> The song that I first auditioned for the group with came on. It was Fidelity by Regina Spector. I sang How We Day, mm -hmm. She Says, mm -hmm. which also happened to be my first solo. I don't think it's ever been done before or again. I hear in my mind all these voices. Said okay, I left and hopefully made an impact on Janina. When we actually went to um, let people know they made it into the group, and actually the year that I was uh, made it into the group as well, the group would go around and sing, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the song, Tutti Fruity O Rudy. Oh, here's one of our first songs ever, Tutti Fruity. You probably can't see this, but um, that arrangement was uh, memorable. We used to sing that to people. And I, I remember thinking that I never got in on acapella initiation night when it was 10.30 at night. And then I remember hearing the knock on the door at 11 p.m. and opening the door to the loafers being like, sorry, we're late, but we love you and you're part of our group. And it was just like the lowest of the lows, the highest of the highs. Next thing you know, um, I guess they were hard up for bases or something because they ended up taking me in. 
my phone rang and I picked it up and it was um, my best friend from NYU who I sang with in my acapella group. It was uh, her sister um, calling to tell me that um, my friend had gotten into a car accident and had passed away uh, the, that day. I was um, crying on the bed, um, obviously really upset, and my phone rang again. This time, it was Sam, and he was like, ah, congratulations, welcome to Penny Loafers, we're having this big party tonight, and we're gonna get wasted and sing, and with all the new friends, uh, <laughs> which was so exciting for me. Um, and it was like this weird, surreal experience where I had just been told this like horrible news about a friend of mine who I used to sing with, and then I have this new singing group that I am able to be a part of, and I almost felt like she was looking out for me. Like, what traditions were in place when you were in the group? So the first one, obviously, is like telling somebody they didn't get in. Mm -hmm. When, in fact, they have gotten in. Mm -hmm. But but you make them feel as though they've failed. I cried a lot. <laughs> you cried? Yeah, they told me, um, Ko and Julie came into my room. <laughs> And they were really serious, and I was also so uncomfortable because, like, my music was playing, and it felt a little too romantic. I don't know if you got that vibe. And then they were like, oh, hey, well, we like you, um, we liked you a lot, and did a really good job at your audition, but, like, we just, like, have so many good people this year, and, like, we just can't accept you. And I just, like, I felt myself, like, starting to cry, and then it, which made it even more pathetic, because it was, like, such a slow, like, <laughs> Oh. And then I just started sobbing and like pushed them out what of my room. It was sound? so awkward. What was the initial sound? I think no, it was like what I was. Oh, and then I preached about how pen is too exclusive. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> I plastered a smile on my face while Sean and Bernie told me that I should try out next year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. That well, because then they, then you appreciate it more. You have your heart broken. Do like, you appreciate it more? Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like a Stockholm syndrome thing. I don't think that's how it works. For me. Them. I've been rejected from a few other things since, and I always wait thirty seconds, thinking that maybe they're gonna be like, "Just kidding, you made it." No, no one's ever been kidding except for that one time with lovers. Uh, when we got in that night, we I took my first shot by the love sign in front of the library, and watched. Jane and Emily, the beautiful blondes of the group, just like prancing around. Um, I think it was like, raining, so it was it was just a very romantic scene. I was also holding this shot of absolute citron, thinking, "Am I going to do this? Like, am I going to be a person who drinks now? Is this is this what's going to happen? And like, who are these people? Are are these people cool? Like, are they going to take care of me? Are they nice? Do I like them?" And you know, I don't know if it was the music or, you know, being in the group or peer pressure, but, or just a sense that, like, college was a time to change. But when the song ended, I threw that shot back and holy hell did it burn my throat. Um, and it, it was like I never looked back after that. The night that we were supposed, we were inducting new people and we were supposed to go pick up Mariel and Kat and Brian. Basically, we were just having so much fun singing karaoke that we totally forgot to go pick up the new the newbies. However, there was a short moment during uh, the loaf initiation party my senior year that I got really nervous about the future of loafers. Um, so anyway, I spent a portion of the night crying in the bathroom. Um, I think that alcohol probably had something to do with that, but anyway, I was crying. Um, so Kate Cohen came into the bathroom and asked me what was wrong, and I can remember uh, crying and telling her how scared I was that people didn't really love loafers and like, you know, uh, Kate thankfully uh, was not offended by my comment and told me I was crazy and she said, Rachel, like, I love this group. You don't, you don't even understand. Like, I love this group so much. It means so much to me. Um, it, I really, really love this group. You and you shine People kind of ask a lot, like, why did you do 
these 50 songs, why was it an oldies group? Well, you probably know that in order to get SAC funding, you had to have a niche. You had to be different from someone else. And all the other groups on campus had a very specific niche. And we had to find one. We had an excuse, we had to find an excuse for being another a cappella group, right? There were a bunch of VHS tapes in this box, and I remember popping one in starting to watch this, I don't know what show it was, it was a super old Penny Loafer show, and I remember everybody was wearing purple for some reason, which I didn't, or, yeah, they were wearing purple, I don't know if you guys were wearing Penny Loafers on your feet, but I know that you were all wearing purple, and you were singing these super old, like, cheesy songs, and I just remember, like, the arrangements were so not what we were doing. I can apologize belatedly for lots of things, like the hyphen, and um, the 50s music, although we loved singing that then. Um, and then, you know, we had to figure out like how we could look different, so someone suggested purple, and so we were purple. I, I, don't, I don't know where that came from. I couldn't believe that that was the group, like, at one point, that was the group, like, purple shirts, doo-wop, you know, sitting on the dock of the bay, and now, you know, we're singing you know, Sufjan Stevens and um, Sia. Oh, but um, but before that happened, we were just oldies and we wore penny loafers and we would wear old, you know, vintage clothes. I hope some of you will remember this original penny loafers uh, sweater as well. And I got this awesome blue 1950s style dress downtown in Center City at a vintage store and it cost me like $40 and I was so excited about it. And then we got invited to Columbia to sing there and we drove a, a car up to Columbia and we left on the street in Harlem and when we came back we'd been robbed and they took everything, including our costumes. So we had to get on stage that night. And I remember, I think it was James Dempsey, he was like, the first thing he said as we got on stage in front of all the kids at, at Columbia was, we've been robbed. That was the end of that wonderful dress and the vintage style. And then we ended up doing purple, that was our thing. I was just like, so like dumbfounded, like obviously, like what, like I, I, why didn't anyone tell me about this? Like I, I imagine it like, when people came over from Europe and they like saw North America for the first time and they were they probably were all just like what the hell what is all this what is this hey listen up if you're doing drugs you've got a problem if you think an addict is only that guy on the street you're wrong whether it's smoke crack green scum nose candy or even peyote you got a problem period end of story that's it <laughs> you know, the other thing that was really, um, that set us apart in the old days was skits. And we had a few incredible skit writers and started out with James Dempsey and then Tony came in the group and Tony Angelus and James were working together and they had so many great ideas. And that's really what the loafers got to be known for in the, in, you know, the very early 90s was comedy. And then other people contributed and people started writing stuff, Rob, Dean, and Addison Snell. Welcome to Paris, the Penn Automated Registration Information System. Please enter your student identification number. Please enter your personal access code. Please enter your height in millimeters. Just, um, it just blew up into a really fun thing. Um, and we had lots of great skits. My favorite being, um, of course, my two dads are Millie Vanilli. Oh, Millie. Yeah, Vanilli. <laughs> I mean, Paul McCartney could not make a floor even half as clean. <laughs> I agree, and Bob Dylan would be hard pressed to fake his delicious pan of brownies. <laughs> and neither could be as good as fathers as we have turned out to be. Yes, screw the Grammy committee. We didn't want the award anyway. Yeah. We found our true calling, huh, Millie? Yeah, but Millie. Body slam! <laughs> I don't know if you guys do that anymore. I haven't been back, so I'll, I'll look forward to the next time I come. But you probably have gotten so good that um, that's not uh, part of the show anymore. You don't need it. <laughs> like, we need to, to distract you from the fact that it wasn't always perfect, vocally. Um, yeah. <laughs> Dream 
So many of you know this, uh, maybe half of the group may not, but the Penny Loaf for Alumni song used to be Cecilia. And I remember being one of the few or who have sung Cecilia and Drift Away as the, as the alumni song. Um, both great songs. We switched it um, to Drift Away and <clears throat> there was some contention but uh, suffice it to say, I'm very nice to see that as an alumni family, everybody has joined harmoniously um, to that decision and to continue singing that song together today. You can I think you can get group massages or something. At least I seem to remember us all sort of standing around in a circle and everyone massaging the person in front of them. Uh, I don't know if, if uh, you guys still do the hut nowadays. So I wish I could be there with you guys to give you all hugs and take some loaf shots with you. Um, actually, I'd probably only take like one loaf shot because at this point I get a hangover for like three weeks after two glasses of wine, which is really sad. Oh, the joys of aging. <laughs> oh, and another regret was not going to the uh, after party on the 20th and missing the loafer shot, which didn't exist in mine or Shira's era. So that must have happened. I mean, you guys became, you know, drunkards, you know, sometime after 2001, if you want to pinpoint this. When I was in the group, yes, there were parties. I think there was also drinking, although I think at the time it wasn't mandatory. Before any gig, you you get like a pep talk from the president and then you put your hands in the center. And you oh say, yeah, I don't, the, we don't, we didn't say anything when I was in the group. To James Dempsey, class of 1989, for teaching us that the key to good acapella. What is the key to asking acapella? And, and we all said, I don't know. know. And, <laughs> and then we would go on and we would never know. What is the key to asking acapella? It's like a football huddle. We all put our hands in. Oh, ask, ask me, this is really What's the key to ask kicking acapella? Oh, Gia Pronto. Gia Pronto. Oh my God. Yeah. What is the key to acapella? It's defense. Defense, because that's what a football team would say. I think already. they like single-handedly fueled our group. Yeah, they definitely the fueled my freshman 45. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was real thick. That's what we call. I was my. What was your nickname when we were? Oh, in I didn't have a nickname. I'm not oh, fun mine was Thickums. Bye guys. Uh, all right, honey. What's the key to asking acapella? Defensive, Defensive sex. sex. In 1994, 1995, the Casey Smith interjected. What is the key to what is the key to good acapella? defense, and Casey would say, and sex. And from my understanding, this became defensive sex. So What's the key to asking acapella? I don't know, like, you know that feeling like when you just woke up and you're like groggy, like you still feel like you're still dreaming, mm -hmm. but you're not dreaming? That's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So there is your true evolution of what is the key to good acapella. What is your most embarrassing moment at Loafers? I have a lot of embarrassing moments at Loafers. One is my freshman year fall show. As I'm sure you all know, I did the Z hit. So <laughs> and it was my first semester, and I was terribly nervous, and as I already noted, I was a shy person, and I had never sang in front of multiple people before. So nervous. I got influenced by these like really cool upperclassmen <laughs> that like it would be a really great idea if I like emulated the artist in her she music video. And people told me it would be cool to dance. And so I was like, oh, they're cool, so it must be cool if I do it. And then it turns out to me it would be cool. It wasn't cool. I can't, I'm not a good dancer. I'm not a good dancer. I'm not. I can't do it. And like now it's become a thing, like in the younger classes, like apparently everyone has watched it. And going to clinicals, and then I was the only one wearing white scrubs to rehearsal and getting my pants pulled down in rehearsal. I forget who exactly did that, but anyway. That happened. So one time we turned the lights off and Michael Page was wearing his pants before the lights were turned off, but when they came back up, he wasn't wearing any pants. Oh, hey there. You might have noticed that I'm wearing socks with my sandals, but I couldn't care less because I'm a man. I'm in my 30s. You know why else I have the confidence to wear socks with my sandals? 
It's because I did acapella. We sang at my high school, and it was really funny because they had hung up a huge picture of me. And so I remember posing with my gigantic photo um, after our performance there. It was, it was just horrifying and funny at the same time. Uh, a lot has changed, obviously, since then. Uh, doing this video has gotten me to uh, dig out my old freshman pen ID. Uh, as you can see, I've really changed a lot since then. Uh, lost a little bit of hair, but otherwise looked pretty similar. And I'm amazed you guys still let me in the group, um, even though I went out on initiation night wearing mesh shorts. Um, so thank God you guys looked past my mesh shorts. You know, I do want to say one more thing. In that, or, and it is sort of about the mesh shorts. When I was in Penny Loafers, people were not that well dressed. Man, I feel like it was like maybe six or seven or eight years later, I went to a loaf show and I looked at whoever was sitting next to me. It was probably Glenn and I was like, dude, the loaf is like hot now and they're like, they dress well and they're really good looking. And so um, you guys got a lot better looking after after we all left the group. I don't know, it was an evolution and it was a good evolution. So I just wanna give you all credit for that as well. This is the loafers attempting to make a video for you alumni. Why do we love Low Valley? <laughs> <laughs> this is, now this is awkward, but, but we love, 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 because we, we love just love. had a BYO at a karaoke place with counterparts. With counterparts, <laughs> we might not post <laughs> this. No, we're not starting. Okay, over. fine. We won't start. Okay. Hi. Hi. How's it going? How's it going? Hi. Hey. How's it going? How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> You know what else I remember? I remember seeing Liz Morris's butt crack a lot. I would like to shout out to Allie Jordan. When she was music director, she did not wear a bra and she moved her arms all around. And that was just like what she was doing. And like, I miss that. And I love that about loafers, that that just happened. And we were all just down with it. Um, oh, uh, my kitten is running laps in the background. So you might see a little tail go by as I'm talking, but uh, there's nothing I can do about that. Oh yeah, there it goes. I do remember one spring break that we went to Club Med and basically sang to our heart's content. It was the family-oriented Club Med, so it wasn't anything crazy. But I do remember doing the flying, the high-flying acrobat act or whatever it was, the trapeze act there. I believe it was Ryan Mann and um, Bradley Edelman and I, and we were up there in our spandex doing um, the high-flying trapeze act. Um, tons of fun. One time, we gen so hard, Allie's shoulders dislocated, both of them. And we decided to call the show Sex, Drugs, and Acapella. And we had a wonderful advertising campaign for the show, where we would put up posters everywhere on Locust Drive, up and down the bridge. And on the first day, we would just put up posters saying sex. And then on the second day, the posters would say drugs, and on the third day, acapella. And we, we thought we would get some attention by that. And I remember putting the posters up on the bridge, and there were people, you know, walking by us, looking really suspiciously at us, you know, putting up all these pieces, all these signs just saying sex. I remember trying to get to a an away gig, and four or five of us were in Craig. Greg Horitz's car trying to get to, to this place and it broke down and renting the giant truck. I mean, we could have stored everything in the back, but there was five of us trying to get in the cab of this tiny little cab. People sitting on people's laps and getting there just in the nick of time. Felicia had asked me to go and get flowers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> go get flowers for, um, for the graduating seniors. And <laughs> I, I came from the Philippines, so up until then I had no idea that I was allergic to pollen. Wait, did I not have pollen in the Philippines? If anything, they have weed for the I don't know. I don't know. Okay, maybe something else. I don't know, but, but I pick up the flowers. They're definitely flowers. I pick up the flowers, I pick up the flowers and I gave it, I, I came back to the rehearsal, and like my throat was clogged up and I couldn't see, and my, my nose were just, my nose well, was like running. Your eyes were I was singing, but I was like, puppy, I was singing. Um, All I got. Ah, oh, that's how it sounded basically because like my throat was clogged up. I remember Jess Sobin single-handedly seducing the entire freshman class. 
I remember forgetting, or I don't remember this, but I, apparently I forgot the words to Billy Joel's Pressure while on stage, but I remember reading about it later and people telling me that I forgot the words and, and swore right into the microphone while I was trying to remember the words. Tori Pierce. First time she ever sang a song with the Penny Loafers, she forgot her words mid-song and she turns around and she's just like, you guys, stop singing. I don't know, I don't know the words to the song we've been rehearsing for weeks. Never one to not outdo herself. Tori, her senior year, for her final solo, decided to bring back that song, to redeem herself, to sing that song again without forgetting the words this time. And do you know what Tori did after explaining to the audience how she forgot the words the first time she ever sang this song? She started the song up and she forgot the words again. It was amazing. We didn't know if she was kidding or not. She just turned around and she's like, you guys, I don't know the words. And we were like, yeah, no, you're, you're, you know, you know the words. You've been singing this song for three years. You know the words. I think one of the most amazing things about being an acapella group is the fact that you have this common denominator of music. We all came into Loaf with this base of having a, an individual passion for music. And having a group of people that shared that passion was a really great community to be a part of. We all had different lives and studied different things outside of rehearsal, but we could all bond over our mutual love for music. I also think of like how Penny Loafers gave me just like a true love of music. I loved music before, but I think it was like so, that love was so nurtured and enhanced by my experience in the Loafers. I, the fact that I was music director just like um, really connected me with music so much. The music. I think it's just, at the end, it's about music. There's a good documentary, 20 Feet from Stardom. They don't do it for the stardom. They do it for that feeling of singing with other people. And like when you lock into a sound and just like it's transcendent, and like that's why they do it. They're addicted to that and they spend their whole life doing it. And I think all of us can relate to that feeling. Um, it's like what made us all bond together without even really having to talk about it. I would say that the song that stuck out when I was in the group was uh, Sam's Bed of Lies. So coming in, I was super intimidated um, that I was, you know, having to step into two pairs of enormous, enormous shoes. There's this part in the second verse where I noticed that I would have, I was going to be singing it alone. <laughs> Um, no, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh. And I, I, I thought it was so pretty, and I remember hearing that part of the show, and I was then like realizing, oh my god, I have to sing this part by myself. And it was so intimidating. And I remember that part led into a harmony uh, with Sam and Rachel. It made me realize that, like, how needed. I was, that there was a place for me, that there are parts in songs that were specific for just one person or, you know, in this case, like one tenor needed to sing this part and without it, like, there would have been something missing from the background. That part, that one line that I got to sing with what I considered my, my two closest friends um, at the time at school with Sam and Rachel, I, I really, I love that memory. So one of my favorite Penny Loafers memories is from when we were invited to sing at a Greenpeace concert in Beijing in 2006. Um, this big rock star named Zhao Wei, he's the lead singer of this band named Catcher in the Rye. He liked our sound, so after the concert he invited us to dinner at Pizza Hut, which was actually a fancy restaurant then. Um, so he, there he asked us to be in his music video, and so after the dinner he shuttled us all to his studio where we did take after take of this one line, we will paint the green to the sky. So the Penny Loafers are in this random 
Chinese envir environmental outreach video um, by one of China's earliest rock bands. So that one night is the perfect example of how you never know what to expect from this group, but we were doing such amazing things. We went to China to sing with Greenpeace, yeah. and um, I can't believe we got to do that. I can't believe we actually made that work. We got to go hike the Great Wall of China. Jesse took his shirt off oh, on yeah. the Great Wall. Always a highlight. Good. highlight of any trip. It's a good trip. Highlight of any rehearsal, really. Where Where did you travel with the group? Just Puerto Rico. No, Again, you, you took away money to... from us. Rochester? That's not traveling. That's a trip. Rochester is more of a punishment. I will continue to listen to our old CDs on the subway and think back fondly onto this loaf experience. And moreover, we were able to record CDs every year while I was there. I mean, I don't know that that was like the financially responsible thing to do, but. What an accomplishment that we came together and devoted literally hundreds of hours of our time to making a final product that we could be proud of and share with everyone. You know, sometimes, you know, once in a while I'll pop in one of the old CDs and sometimes Alex will make fun of me for it, but um, <laughs> I listen to them and it's like I have all of you well, I do have all of you in the room with me, and it, yeah. it really, it's overwhelming, and, and you feel so close to each other. It's, it's just to think back on what we, what we accomplished, and you know, these huge shows, and great CDs that my, my parents and family would come, and, you know, friends from high school were like, what are you doing in an acapella group? And then they come to the show, and then they became huge fans, and and we were fortunate enough to make three CDs while we were there, although whose idea it was to stick a short kid and call it Nabo, which meant dwarf in French. Uh, Casey will always remember you for that. Having all these upperclassmen take you under their wing and teach you about, uh, teach you about music, teach you about college life, um, teach you about beat, beatboxing, which uh, was a, certainly a, a favorite new skill that I learned that I still uh, do in the shower today. I'd say by the time I graduated, Glee, the mm -hmm. sing-off. Oh yeah, it was I think not something perfect like, was like right after we. It graduated. was like nerdy, like it was not a cool yeah, thing. It became to do a thing. It was like a thing mm -hmm. when we when we left. Yeah, yeah. I, was I think cool. but now there's. I wonder how many. They probably have a lot of people audition like just because they want to sing and they're involved. But for us, it was like always kind of hard to get people. Yeah, it wasn't cool. Yeah. We were cool. We were the cool group on campus. I know, it, I, I know we thought that. Yeah, the girls were pretty. Well, that's objective. Like, they were legitimately beautiful. Yeah. You know, the music was obviously a huge aspect of it. Um, I think we, we've always been a great group, and we're still a great group. And I'm not going to lie and say that every single note that we sung was perfect or is perfect, but having so many good, genuine people come together and commit to this you know, every note was felt at the very least. And this is something I definitely saw um, carry over into even some of the unorganized singing we were doing. I mean, just getting together, you know, after a night out on a Saturday and just, you know, jamming in someone's room and just seeing kind of this like level of talent paired with this level of vulnerable vulnerability like come across like it was amazing and still to this day amazing. I think a lot of the the best memories that I created with Loaf obviously is is in the singing and the in the rehearsals and the and all that, but um, was also in the jamming and that's for a lot of you who know me well. That's that's what I'm all about about jamming. Um, yeah, jamming. And then Mike Young joined the group. And out of nowhere, I think we were at my apartment, and he was just messing around on the keyboard. And then someone said, like, oh, cool, like, I, can you play this song? And he just did it. And it was, like, everyone just sort of stopped that moment where silence takes over the room. 
because there was a person in our group, like super nice guy, really quiet for the most part, that was apparently the savant when it comes to playing piano. Um, and I think that's really what made the you know the experience of being in love so special um, was just getting a six pack or multiple six packs um, and just going to you know one of our places and just playing hours on end. Um. I remember leaving anywhere I was at night the second anyone said, let's jam in Mike's room. This is my boy Connor, who's was just first. turned 16, and he was not only singing at the high school, but got involved in this men's barbershop chorus. Be now, uh, uh, my business is uh, singing close harmony. I'm in a group called the Swing Dolls, and we perform the music of the Andrews Sisters primarily. You I think the one thing that I have to say that um, that I took away with is is uh, the confidence to to be in vocal groups and to lead musically. And at one point we were in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, I was gonna sing uh, time after time for the for the first time, and I was really nervous. After I sang the song, um, this man came up to me and said that uh, do you know who I am? And I said no. And he said that he was. Rob Hyman, who wrote, who co-wrote the song "Time After Time," with Cindy Lauper. So that was really, really exciting for me. Just that he heard me sing "Time After Time" and he liked it. Um, you know, "Fly from Heaven" was one of the the songs that really resonates with me a lot. I think that that was performed, um, you know, a lot of places that that were the most meaningful to me, including a lot of sort of welcoming ceremonies for people. And I just remember being in the button, everyone saying, fly from heaven. And it was like being in the middle of this live radio. I mean, it was one of the most amazing sounds I'd ever heard. But um, one of the other loafers mentioned that she remembers all singing together at the button. And you guys, I guess, were singing fly from heaven, which I remember being a really powerful song too. Uh, I also remember <clears throat> doing rehearsing in one of the stairwells, I think it was the nursing building, and just blending our voices together, and I thought we should just record this because, I wish we did, because it just sounded awesome. We could hear each other, the way that the acoustics were in that stairwell, it was just amazing. Just all the music that we were able to make together, singing songs like Streets of Philadelphia, Fly, From Heaven. And I remember when I was a freshman, there was a night that we were all rehearsing at one of the high-rise rooftop lounges and it was totally dark out and we all stood by the window in a small circle and we sang Streets of Philadelphia and Brian Nolan was the soloist. My roommate had arranged, my roommate Jeff Pinko, who was a penny loafer for one semester, arranged Streets of Philadelphia which had just come out, you know, the movie Philadelphia had been filmed on campus during the time we, we, we lived there. Um, so it was an important song for us at the time. And it was just so amazing to be producing this like haunting sound together. Um, it sounded so beautiful. People were crying by the end. We were all hugging each other. Um, and it really was just something really special to be able to produce music like that, something we all loved with people we loved, so. Rehearsing it in the rooftop lounge, almost completely dark, a little bit of light, looking out over Center City, so we're literally looking at the streets of Philadelphia, and the group was in tight. We were, it was like we were almost hugging each other while we're singing. I mean, we were all right up, up against the window of the high rise, looking out, seeing the streets of Philadelphia, seeing us, slight reflections of ourselves, hearing the voice, voices echoing off the, the glass. Um, still, you know, it was the best performance we ever did of that song. The CD version came out pretty good, but, um, that's the version I'll always remember. You know, the music was always a tremendous part of 
of the group, obviously. Um, the bonds that came out of that music are something very special that I can't say that I have with anybody else from college other than loafers. There's something really magical about what you guys create when you're on stage um, and when all of the notes click and everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing. All the sounds are coming together. There's a feeling of cohesiveness and a feeling of belonging that just is magical. And it is a natural high that I think we've all been chasing since uh, graduating um, and graduating from loafers as well. I, when I got in the group in 98, I was this skinny, quiet, closeted gay kid who didn't really know what I was doing with myself. And somehow I found myself in the Penny Loafers and you guys took me in and made me feel a part of something. I was a part of something. We were a family and um, we were a crazy, nerdy, dysfunctional family, but we all loved each other and supported each other. Or it was like home at Penn. It was definitely a family. As it turned out, they'd become my friends and my family. And then just like love when I think of the family that we created in Loafers, like every single year, it felt like family. And even though we don't talk all the time, it's still like family and it's still normal every time we do see each other. You'll always have a group on campus that is uh, family. Loafers were the best friends, the best support system, and the best family I could have ever asked for while being at Penn. To, to me, Penny Loafers was sort of like a family, you know, a family away from home. There's a reason yeah, why we have the same that. feeling of family and the sense that you really found a home. You were all my sorority and fraternity all rolled into one. The Penny Loafers were probably the thing that shaped me the most as a person. Loaf was really the reason why I uh, started to grow out of my shell and sort of into myself. But I was also just even more blown away with just how great these people were as human beings. Um, we were a group of crazy, wonderful, loving, um, just misfit toys. You know, the music meant so much to me, but I think what almost mattered more were all of the friendships that I made. And just having all of these wonderful people to call my new friends and eventually my family was just so comforting. Watching Terry in the front row, um, you know, like standing up after every song, crying and um, telling everybody how amazing they are, it like really got me. Um, people in this group really love each other and they love this group. Um, and they have now for 30 years. And um, I'm glad that that moment of doubt was such a short one. The coolest thing, and I have to thank Facebook for this, and the Penny Loafers on Facebook, is when um, I wrote this song, I, I wrote the lyrics and the vocal arrangement and performed this song with my group um, for a Fiat commercial. Someone, even I don't know if it was me or someone else, said, hey, you know, on the Facebook Penny, Penny Loafers page that I had done this, and someone else said, wait a minute, uh, one of our other members was in that commercial, and it turned out Stephanie Lynn was in the commercial, and I had written, co-written the song that is the voiceover for the commercial. So that was the coolest thing in the whole world to see two Penny Loafers collaborating on, not even knowing they were collaborating, um, and making this really cool um, campaign. I tried to for the penny loafers, mainly cause Mario was hot. I just came to sing a few gins and jokes, but instead a family's what I got. When you're gone, when you're gone, you're gonna miss us when you're gone. You're gonna miss the BYOs and taking shots before the shows, but we'll still keep coming back when you're gone. Leland used to say whenever, you know, Penn, something's happening at Penn, whether it's homecoming or like some big party or some like, 
occasion where there's multiple people from all walks of life, like out and about, fling. Loafers always somehow find a way to each other. And I think that's just because we just really like each other. Um, I think we've just assembled a really special group of people with really, really incredible personalities. And I think that's why we always kind of find our way to each other. I want to give a shout out to Matthew Tanzer for taking me upstairs at a fraternity house, showing me a video of a man with no pants who taught us how to beatbox. Having stayed in Philly since graduation um, and watched Josh Dubin, which I'll just call out, is an amazing anchor of our alumni family, um, kind of flourish and watches as this alumni um, kind of group, for lack of a better word, really um, bonds and, and sees each other at shows has just had a profound impact on my life. Um, you know, it's funny, I feel like I've bonded even with people who've never been in the group with, like Tony. Tony and I have never been in the group together, but somehow we have this, we have this loafer bond. James was very important in my life because he taught me about comedy and how to write it. I mean, he, he graduated my freshman year, but you know, he, you know, he stuck around Philly and, you know, he was, you know, the first, like, very influential alum. James Dempsey, he, for me, will always be the heart and soul of the, uh, the Penny Loafers. He set the tone uh, for the group where it was about performance, but also humor and skits. And uh, I will always uh, remember, I will always remember those days. And for me, the, the Loafers and uh, James Dempsey are... Uh, inextricably linked. Um, I feel such a bond and almost a sibling-like bond with everyone in the group in the way that you know you can not see them for years and then feel so connected when you when you do um, because you kind of grew up together. You know when I kind of look at what I loved about college it was those nights that we were in some random overly air-conditioned classroom trying to get the syncopation right for a postal service song and Scott Haddis and Maya Vardy were almost in a in a brawl uh, over who was right about the do 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 um, But what I always appreciated from Penny Lovers and still do now is that it put me with a group of people that weren't necessarily like me. And um, I think that's where special stuff happens, when different people get together. And um, I think that's why the bonds we had are so strong and they transcend anything that's like supposed to be. It's just something that was. I, I always like to say, we stand on each other's shoulders. You know, 1986, a bunch of people, you know, met other people and said, hey, you're cool, we like your talent, it blends with us. And, you know, that chain of people just kept going on and on and on, you know. Which is, how appropriate is that? That like, the loaf, which is just this one cohesive, chunky, doughy, airy, maybe nutty, um, unit, and you know, slice the loaf. Each of us is a slice of the loaf. I thought to myself, wow, um, uh, AJ, what a great guy. I have so many memories of singing in the group with him. Uh, we had so much fun together. And then I sort of racked my brain trying to recall a memory of us in the group together ever. And then I realized we actually never sang in the group together. I think that that actually speaks to the fact that um, Loafers creates this community that transcends the four years you're in college. You guys are so lucky to be a part of this wonderful community of friends. They feel like family to me now. Many of them have gone on to make their own families with one another via Loafcest, which is another wonderful thing. Yep. Deb, are you ready? Deb, you ready, please? All right. No, 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 and they made everybody around them laugh. We need your we need voice. To, that's nice. We, that's I a nice thing. He was singing but, lightly, but yeah. And we went to their wedding, and now they have a baby, and that's amazing. So, um, Deb, what are you going to sing for us today? Yeah, we'll let you know when. When to stop, just to get start. started whenever you're comfortable. Because that's incredible loaf cest right there.
You might want to take your pacifier out. Um, if if I had had my act together and I hadn't dropped out of school, um, the the audition may not have happened. Vikas may not have joined the group, and and then Jess and Vikas wouldn't have this baby. So this is I don't know I I I, I am I am a proud something or other. I don't I don't even know. Trip, thank you for leaving the group for a brief stint so that um, Vikas could join. That year, I loved seeing, singing with you, but it was also very important, I guess, for Vikas and my story together. Um, this group has produced a ton of great music. I think a few babies, loaf babies. Yeah, actually, you know, yeah. Well, we got married and had a loafer baby, like several other people. Mm -hmm. One thing that we both learned from our time in loafers unexpectedly was that acapella and loafers could be a place where you could get a date or a possible future life partner. You in particular, Panzer. <laughs> Obviously, I'm gonna kill you. I feel my temperature rising for you. Um, and I had written on the wall of the Penny Loafers, MySpace, uh, Sam, I guess saw my post and then looked at my profile and saw that, you know, that I was gay and that I was cute. And then you messaged me and you were like, OMG, I'm Sam. You're looking real good. <laughs> I think that was your actual quote. And then we dated each other for nine years after that. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to audition for the Penny Loafers. But once I got to Penn and we were already dating, I, I couldn't join the Penny Loafers. Because that was your thing. It was my thing. But then after going to a couple of shows, I saw Anna sing at last. Mm -hmm. My love has come along. And I but loved then it. You thought, at last, it's my time. <laughs> was the music director at that time. Um, you were the music handsome? director. Oh, yeah. Oh. So that was you. Yeah. He was handsome and then mm. he broke up with me. <laughs> Loafers brought us to Cleveland. No, it didn't. No, but it brought us together. Yeah. I mean we're still friends. Uh-huh. We still we've 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 uh Do you think most people at the show might not know that we broke up? Well they'll know now. They're gonna know. What, what better way? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Um, I want to shout out to Shaddis. Hi! Hi. We're, We're the, the Shaddises! <laughs> and now he's married to another loafer who I work with and I get to see. Um, and we live in New York together and so I get to hang out with them as well, which is wonderful. Oh, my heart. My heart sings for you, girl. Obvious, the obvious thing is the the best gift that I've ever gotten from anything has been from loafers, and that's meeting the lovely Anna. Scott, what was what? It, what was I wearing when I auditioned for the Penny Loafers? In my mind or in reality? I met a Penny Loafer who joined the group right after I left. Let's see if I can do this. right there. She's now filming her, so I'm gonna go over here. You know, after I graduated, I was emailing Ashira at some point. She was the music director that year. She mentioned that they were pretty much changing the alumni song from Cecilia to Drift Away. I was one of the few old loafers that said, oh my god, you know, I, I wrote Shira and said, oh my god, I cannot stand Cecilia. <laughs> That's a song. <laughs> um, and uh, I think Shira was kind of pissed at me. So it's like, she didn't ask me to, to, to tell the alumni, and I did anyway. But she couldn't be too mad at me because then it led to me. And then Shira and I just started emailing each other and realized, hey, there's something going on here. I don't really deserve any credit for setting them up since I didn't actually try to do that. But, you know, I don't have any other successful intentional setups on my record, so I'm just going to take credit for that. that. That was it. We started dating, and um, years later, um, We've been, we've been married 16 years now. 
we've been together, all, we, we were together all that time. I owe the loafers my marriage, my kids. This is what the group means to me. Jaron Tony, you're welcome. Another really nice moment for me was uh, getting to sing Take Me Out. And then we had the opportunity to share the stage with Arts House Dance Company. Um, and so we sang that song while the dancers were performing. And within that group turned out to be Lindsay, who ends up being my wife. So that's a moment that I'll uh, forever share with her. Because of Penny Loafers, I met my wife. And we're still friends. I mean, we've gone to each other's weddings. The Loafers actually sang at my wedding last year, um, including members of the group currently, who um, could probably tell you a couple stories about that. Um, and I remember just like watching all the Loafers like, get married, have their kids be born. The best man at our wedding was a Penny Loafer. Actually, one of the really great things that happened through Penny Loafers was I met my husband for the first time through auditions. He, I, I was already in the group because I'm older than he is, and he auditioned for us and I actually saved my audition notes where I have his name and the notes that I took on him. So that was, that's pretty funny that I still have that. And he actually made it into Off the Beat. He didn't get into Loafers, but I think that's a good thing. I don't think that we have, would have made it if we were in the same group for any amount of time. I think uh, it's a good thing. Our matron of honor came into our life because of Penny Loafers. And sharing that to the people that come after you and seeing them carry that on, it's like they're your little children. It's like the most happiest <laughs> thing ever. And speaking of children, not that we we're having one. <laughs> okay, that sounded so weird. Oh, and and another and another one on the way. Another little boy on the way. If it wasn't uh, for Penny Loafers. It's all because of you. What the Penny Loafers means to me today can really be summed up in one word, which is legacy. Um, in October this year, two really huge things happened to me. I lost my dad. He died. Um, and my dad had sung with the Princeton Nassoons. He was class of 55 at Princeton. Um, the other thing that happened to me in October was that I was diagnosed with cancer. Um, when the big C comes up, you start thinking about um, what you're going to leave behind. Fortunately, my treatment has been successful and I don't have to worry about that now. But I did think about it a lot in the early days when we didn't really know what we were dealing with. And so one of the things I'm going to leave behind, one of my legacies is the penny loafers. So it's extraordinarily gratifying to know that here we are 30 years later and it's still going strong. I'm very pleased to have been part of that legacy. Um, hearing you all sing last year was such an amazing experience. Knowing that there are still kids at Penn that just want to sing, um, just want to get together with their friends and sing. That makes me extremely happy. It, it's just beautiful to see that, like, what the group has meant to so many people and how similar, even though the group was so different at every point in time, how similar our experiences were and, you know, how much we all enjoyed just getting together to sing with our friends and to make, you know, super fun, super cool music. A lot of my friends now can't believe I was actually in an acapella group and then, you know, they hear me sing to them and they totally understand. I didn't even know how to read music when I got into the group and now I... I play, I play an instrument and I sing and I post videos on Facebook because I'm comfortable doing all of that because the loafers taught me how to do all that. The, the essence of the group doesn't change, like the people change and the music changes, but the core idea that you come together and you share a vision and you care for each other and you develop deep friendships, that, that's not something that you can just make happen easily. And the fact that our group has sustained that for 30 years, there, I mean, there's something special that we've tapped into as the Penny Loafers. You, you learn from the upperclassmen, people came before you, and then you pass that on to the, to the newbies, and hopefully like, they take it to another level, beyond what you did, which I think, you know, definitely has done. We go to now, it's like, so much better than anything we ever did. Um, and that's, you know, that's just really cool. Like, that's, that's what a 30-year legacy does. You just have generations and generations of each taught each other and built on.
what's coming forth. This group was started 30 years ago. That's before I was born. Those are by true people who like believe in the spirit of acapella and the coolness of people coming together to make awesome sounds. So like props to the founders. And I, I want to thank everybody who helped to found this group and everybody who continues to love this group so, so much and the people who continue to make this group um, matter and, and mean so much in people's lives. You know, the trips, the music, the incest, ooh, the drama, um, but most of all, the friendships and the love, like that's really what I took out of it more than anything else. It's my marriage, it's my kids, it's the best thing that was that happened to me at Penn. You know, one of the best things that happened to me in my life. Um, I keep in touch with so many of you and it's been great, you know, to go to each other's weddings, to um, find out about the births of our kids and just to walk through life together. It's incredible to have that. Even now, if they're, you know, in the next room or another state or across the country or across the world, they're still the same loafers. I think I remember in my final show, I think Phil or someone said into the mic that like I had told them that loafers was the most important thing to me in college and everyone in my fraternity started to boo. And <laughs> I would say that again um, because it was. You know, I can go back to that really drunken moment at the initiation party where I shouted, I'm a loafer. and. You know, I still mean it, and it's still something that's very intrinsic to who I am, and knowing that I'm going back for this 30th year anniversary show, like, I'm still a loafer. We're all loafers. I really think that this is just one of the most amazing groups of humans that has ever existed, and everyone should be so proud to be part of it. I know I am. And I owe it all to the first people who accepted me into the group and took a chance on a stranger who sounds like a boy who forgets her lyrics. But I know that the one thing that I've left behind that really is meaningful is the penny loafers. Well, okay, maybe not the one thing, but that is definitely one of the things. Uh, and I'm happy to report that uh, my son, who's 20 years old and, and minoring in music at the Frost School of Music at University of Miami, is in two groups, uh, a for credit male group called Maelstrom and an, and an acapella group called The 18th Notes. So it's nice to know that, um, you know, the next generation of acapella singers is, uh, is here. And my kids now, who are in middle school and younger, uh, are, listen to it, and they, they look forward to the day when they can be in a group like that. And they're, they're proud of, of that I was in a group that, that sounds like that happy to pass down my love of the singing and the music to my daughters. They both sing as well and hopefully maybe they'll be in love someday. Now I have a one-year-old kid who loves playing the ukulele and they, he wouldn't have that, um, that love of music if it wasn't ultimately taking it back to the penny loafers. It was the weirdest thing I've ever done in my life with the weirdest group of people but it was the best time I've ever had. Wow, 30 years. That is so incredible and amazing. And I am so proud to be a part of this group. Um, I'm gonna do my very best to get my butt there next year. The 31st anniversary, what? That's big, right? So I'm very proud of you all. I'm very proud that um, I've been some small part of the Penny Loafers. Thank you to the people who started it, thank you to the people who continue it, and, um, and uh, congratulations. One, to Rachel Kramer and the original Penny Loafers for starting this party back in 1986. It's amazing to know that this group has lasted since this time and that there is a huge number of us spread all around the world who all share the purple Penny Loafer roots. So I am so happy to toast this 30th anniversary of this incredible institution that's larger than any one of us. And definitely um, a life-changing part of my pen experience. So I hope you guys have a great time celebrating the 30th anniversary and continue making music for hopefully another 30 years. First experience like with conflict resolution and trust um, with a brand new group of people and we just, we loved each other and we, fought for each other and um, 
it was the greatest experience of my life. To the, to the new people in the group and to future loafers, this will be the best thing you, you do in college and you won't regret a single second of it. I'm so happy, I'm so proud to be a part of this 30 year old thing. Here's hoping for 30 more guys and keep it up, done a great job. So thank you everybody and congratulations to us. Hope you guys are all having a blast. I can't wait to see everybody for the 30th anniversary. I'm so proud to have been a part of this group. A much loaf, everybody. We really owe it to ourselves to, to celebrate this group. Glad to see Penny Loafers continuing to be so important to so many people. Loafers really was the only redeeming thing that I did at school. Kisses to all the loafers. I love you all so much. I love you. Mwah. Um, see you soon. Keep the legacy going. Can't wait to see you guys all. Anyway. Say bye to Dad. Wish him a good day at the office. Congratulations on 30 years. You're all really, really sexy. The Penny Loafers are amazing and will always hold strong, so I love you guys. This is going to be a great night. Love you. Uh, I really want to do the loafer shot. Cheers. Are you good? Are you going to ask me? Oh, oh. Looking forward to a great night and, and a great show. To all 30 years of loafers, for keeping the love and the music alive. Happy, Happy 30th anniversary, Kenny <laughs> Loafers. <laughs> Frog out, Megan out. Congratulations on 30 years. Yay, go loaf. I hope you all have a wonderful anniversary show. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for uh, for your contribution to the group and for your friendship. And uh, yeah, congratulations, 30 years. I hope that your 30th anniversary show goes as well as all of our shows did. But this is my first show. Um, sitting on the other side of, of the stage. Um, so I'm really excited. I am so, so grateful that I am a loafer and that that has been a part of who I am for four years. Speaking of leaving things behind, I couldn't stop without giving you one really good screenshot of what it looks like to be a penny loafer 30 years later. Ta-da! <laughs> there is this underlying feeling of being a part of something bigger a bigger hole, and a hole that you could call home. It really did feel like home, and it still does whenever I'm with fellow loafers. And all I can say in anticipation for attending this 30th anniversary show is that I'm really excited to be back home. I mean, I can literally sing almost every song off of defense, um, which I don't think is common anymore. I don't know how many people went back that far and are like obsessed with Shamalama Ding Dong. You put the Shamalama baby in my Ramalama Ding Dong. Yeah, oh, you put the oh, 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 back into my smile, child. I'm just gonna perform a number of songs. This scar is a fleck on my porcelain skin. There were no mirrors in my Nana's house. No mirrors in my Nana's house. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, oh, I feel so alive. Dinner and the rest of my life. I'm not sorry, there's nothing to say. I'm a suspect. I'm a traitor. You're just a hideaway. You're just a feeling. My head is a jungle, jungle. My head. Uh, uh, uh -huh.